This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome to a This Week in Photo live stream. I am Frederick Van Johnson, host of the podcast This Week in Photo. Today, I have the honor of sitting down with my friend, Mr. Udi Taraj. He is one of the guys behind spiffygear.com, makers of amazing LED type products and those sorts of things. So Udi and I are going to talk about the just the LED lighting industry overall. Like I said in the description for this video, where is LED lighting right now? There was, there was, and I'm gonna take this conversation from my photographer, me as a photographer standpoint, and the promise of LED, you know, several years ago of, you know, this can replace strobes and we can do all this cool stuff. We don't have to bake our models with, you know, non-LED lighting or blind them with strobe. Now we can use this nice continuous lighting and do all, all sorts of painterly type effects with it. Um, but we haven't seen a whole lot of that yet. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about some of the quality differences between sort of off the shelf Home Depot type LED lighting, which can be had at a percentage of the price of photo gear and what the differences are there between, you know, quality that you'd get from random manufacturer on Amazon.com versus, you know, Home Depot versus buying from a reputable LED uh, source like Spiffy Gear. So here to cover all that stuff with me is Udi Tarash. He is a CEO hey, over there. Up? At Spiffy Gear, Udi, man, welcome to the show, man. Uh, I'm I'm excited to talk about Thanks this for stuff. Having me. Yeah, you are you are very welcome. It is, uh, you know, LEDs. There's a lot of promise behind LEDs, and I want to I want to dive into that and get you and start from the sort of the bottom and work our way up to state of the art. Give us give us your just sort of introduction, like who is Udi and who what's the the Spiffy Gear mission? So. Um here at Spiffy Gear, we're about making lighting easy and fun. And uh, lighting, lighting is fun. I mean, uh, it's a great way to tell a story. Um, it's a great way to convey mood. It's a great way to just show stuff that you want to show people. And um, I would say that after sound, like when you're watching an image or when you're listening to a video, after sound, Light is the second thing that you'll notice, or if it's done well, maybe you won't notice it at all. But I'd say it's one of the crucial aspects of, of telling a story. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, in the world of audio podcasting, obviously, audio is crucial. If your audio sucks, no one wants to listen to you, especially for 30 minutes or an hour. Uh, but I think more and more, well, if, right? If just, your audio just, sucks, no one will listen to you, you know, no matter what. Period, and yeah. There's been experiments, and you know, people will forgive a soft image. That they'll, they'll forgive, uh, uh, you know, noise. That they'll forgive bad framing. One thing that I will not forgive is crappy audio. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And and but on that, let's switch gears and and just move right into this because we only have like 45 minutes to talk about this stuff. Um, the the world of LED lighting. So let's start there. So let's start with. You know, you're a lighting expert, obviously. You guys build it to, to quality. You've been doing it for years. When you when you look at the world of strobe versus LED lighting and the the high ISO, low noise sensors in today's DSLR and mirrorless cameras, point blank, are we at a point now where fashion and studio photographers can just go with continuous lighting versus relying on strobe, in your opinion? So to, to make this so the for this story to make sense, I have to talk to take you a few years back. Okay. So let's uh, let's go back maybe I don't know seven or eight years ago. And seven or eight years ago, there was a huge uh, advance in LEDs, and you know there was a promise that LEDs are going to replace all the lights in the world, and they're going to be cheap, and they're not going to be hot, and they're going to be electricity efficient, and you know it was like a magic pill. And, uh, you know, LEDs started to come out into the market. And uh, we actually had one of the very first LEDs here. Um, and, you know, I tried it out. And, uh, I mean, the light output was nice. It was definitely better than an incandescent light, but the light was purple. Um, okay, so we tried another one. And, uh, you know, some of them had a greenish light. Some of them had a purple light. So it turned out that LEDs 
can produce cheap light, but that light isn't always good for photography because green or purple light will give you horrible sickish um, skin tones. Yeah. So that that was a big challenge for LEDs, and um, there there is a number for that. And that number is called CRI, and CRI is Color Rendering Index. And you know, if you look at the sun, don't look at the sun, but if you look at the sun, the sun uh, outputs almost perfect light. If you look at the combination of of wavelength that build the white light that the sun gives us, then you'll see very uh, normalized representations of all the wavelength. And when you have that, you say that you have a high CRI light. Um, on the other hand, if you look at the, you know, if you go to a to a to an office or to a store and they have horrible, or you know, to a doctor's office and they have this in the waiting room, they have this horrible fluorescence, and everybody just looks sick and greenish. Um, that is a low CRI, and CRI goes from, you know, goes from one. I don't think there are any light that are actually one, but it goes from one all the way up to a hundred. And then good lights, like uh, spiffy gear lights, like some of our partners in the industry lights, are rated at 95 plus. Whereas the fluorescents that you buy from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's are usually, I uh, don't know, around 60, 65 ish. And, uh, you know, your brain compensates for that. So you look mm -hmm. at a person and say, hey, it's a white light. But you cannot compensate in camera. So in camera, it'll look green. But with that, uh, and, you know, with with that compensation in camera, though, I mean, you know, a lot of photographers that are watching this are going to say, OK, well, that's fine. I can buy a greenish light from Home Depot and then shoot in raw and then just, you know, use use a color chart and correct it. And all is right with the world. Is, is that a, vi a viable strategy or, or is there some flaw in there? Sadly, sadly, no. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about tomatoes for a second. So imagine yes. that you have a red a red tomato, and you shine a light on it. So if this is a good light, uh, then both your eyes and the camera will see a red tomatoes. If it's a bad light, your eyes will s still see a red tomato because this is how your brain conceives tomatoes. And you know there are a lot of hints. There's the shape of the tomato. There's the little green thingy on the top. Your brain knows that it's a tomato and it will still look red. Now, cheap lights, uh, usually cheap LED lights, don't have red uh, in, the, in their light output. So they will output green and blue and a bunch of colors, but there is no red or there is very little red. Um, and then when you end up seeing is a tomato that cannot reflect a red light because there's just no red light to reflect. Um, so your tomato will look sick. Okay. Um, so no, this is not something you can offset with uh, with hue or with uh, white balance or with uh, or with tint. If the light is not there, the camera will just not record it. Okay. See that, and that's that's what I was leading you to because you you and I have had conversations about light before, and you opened my eyes about CRI and the 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 distinction between cheap lights and, you know, more expensive lights. And it's about the, the color accuracy. It's like WorkPick says in the chat here, like in product photography, where the client is expecting their, like you're shooting a, a product for Tiffany's, they expect their blue to be Tiffany's blue. It's going to be yep. hard in post to correct to that Tiffany's blue. Why not get it right in the in the raw data to begin with, right? Is that, that's where you're oh, going? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but there, there are two aspects, right? So maybe you're shooting under a warm light, you know, an incandescent bulb, then you shoot raw. And in post, you just slide the temperature until it matches reality. Maybe you have a color chart, you know, a color checker thingy. You slide uh, the little thingy in Lightroom until the temperature, or in your raw processor, until the temperature matches the, the temperature you shot at, and boom, you have the perfect color. But... If the light that you're using does not have some of the colors in it, the object that you're shooting cannot reflect those colors. So uh, imagine that you had, so if you're using a cheap LED, imagine that you had um, an anti-red filter on your camera, right? So if you're putting a red filter on your camera, all you see is red. 
uh, you take that and you subtract it from the image that you get from cheap LEDs. Yeah. The red channel is just not there. Oh, that's so interesting. I want to experiment with that. So, so how does that apply to black and white photography? If you're, if you know your final work is not going to be all vibrant, like your background there with all these beautiful luscious colors in there, uh, and you're going for strict kind of noir black and white look, does it matter? Does the LED lighting matter? Or are you just shooting photons at the subject at that point? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm old schooler. When I started photography, I was still using film. So there was not a lot of uh, post you could do. And even when we shot black and white, we sometimes used um, color filters because the, each color can be represented with different intensity. And then when you use uh, a filter on a camera, even if you're shooting black and white, you will get a different image. You can see, you can kind of see this if you're going to the channel mixer and you're playing with the, with the different uh, channels. Um, so yes, you will see this a little bit. It will not be as impactful as when you're shooting full color. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's one of the key things that I wanted to hammer home in this discussion, just that foundation of color accuracy and, you know, the, and dispelling the myth of, Hey, why don't I just go get some Home Depot lights and do that? Now that's not to say that you can't, you can't do that, right? You could still do that. But when you, when your career and your work get to the point where you need, precise color accuracy or you just don't want that to be a variable in your work so that you can you know start from a, a place of familiarity in lightroom or capture one then yep. you need to go with quality uh, lights that, right that is that is also that is also a question of budget right so let's say yep. that you need a lot of light um and you're not a professional photographer maybe this is a hobby for you and you just need a lot of light then by all means go to home depot get a few work lamps and you know Kesara, sera, you know, uh, you will not yeah. get color accuracy, but you'll have enough light to do your shot. But, you know, if you're shooting textile and your customer wants their shirts to be a specific color, then you would need to work with a color checker and you would need to have a light that has representation for all the wavelength. So you can match so that the, the towel can uh, be captured with the actual colors of the towel. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. See, that that's that's one of the reasons why photography is so fun, because it's all, there's all this science in there. But then there's there's no science, you know, <laughs> you could go completely, you know, here, just let me just make here, some shots, you know, or you can dial oh, it here, in and be very an precise. Anecdote. Here's an anecdote for you. So yeah. uh, when you go, you, you know, back in the days when you went to the supermarket, you had like big lights overheads and uh, those were the lights to light the entire uh you know, the entire aisle section. Um, today, when you go to the supermarket, then maybe the vegetables has a little LED light, you know, like a LED, an LED strip that lights tomatoes and the cucumbers and whatnot. Um, for that uh, light to be certified, it needs to have a CRI of at least 80. So if you're a supermarket and you're buying lights, you're required by the standard to have a light that is of, of CRI of at least 80. So your tomatoes will look good. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. You know, and, and that, that plays out all over the place, right? So in Vegas, for example, right, where there's lights everywhere, they're, they're, they're yeah, I don't know if they hire color scientists or, or lighting specialists. I'm sure they do to make sure that the light inside of casinos and bars and clubs and One, is all perfect, right? Yeah, one of the th one of my suppliers uh, is working with big fashion companies, and um, you know when they build stores, they want all the stores to be identical in in terms of lighting. So they want the light to be not cooler, not warmer, not uh, you know purplish or greenish. Uh, they want it to be on spot for all their stores. They also want it to be. Um, very good quality light so their fashion looks good and they would actually walk with spectrometers so once you finish installing a store they will walk with spectrometers and this is a device that can measure wavelength of light they will walk with the spectrometers around the store and make sure that the lighting is okay all throughout the store and then you know they'll do this for the next door and for the next door and for the next door and this is how they make sure now this you know this is a high-end high-end fashion brands 
and but they want to make sure that their lights are are even and equal all across their stores. Yeah. You know what? Let, let, let's switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about technique now. So we've talked about quality and color consistency and all that. Um, back to my original question, are we at a point now where continuous light, and speaking of continuous light, check this out. Let me, uh, let me put this camera on me and show you. <laughs> Look at, so my continuous light has the sun in it. So, so I'm, I'm like trying well, to hide. There you go. I'm that's, trying to that's hide from the light right there. <laughs> yeah, it's like on my face and that. Um, um, let, 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 let me, just before we, we venture off that, let me just yeah. say this. If you're looking for a light and the light does not say what CRI is it, uh, this is probably not a light that you would use for photo or video. Um, you'd want to get a light that is at least 95 or 95 plus CRI. And, you know, in a pinch, you can go with, uh, with 85, but I wouldn't go any lower. So if you go to Home Depot and you see, oh, that's a nice light, and you, you know you flip the package and you don't find any mention of CRI, then this is not a light you want to buy for photography. Okay, okay, that's that's a good tip. So make sure you look for the a CRI that is what ni ninety five or above, it, or well, ninety five is usually photography lights. Yeah, but standard lights that are good enough are eighty five plus. Okay, eighty five plus. Okay, so then. I'm a photographer. I've got a studio right over there, right next to my office. My office over there. I've got strobes in there. I've got Godox lights, you know, and I'm. I got gels on them. I can do all kinds of stuff. I've got my light meter in there. I can get down with some strobes. I know my way around strobes. It has always been the holy grail for me to one day not have to a blind my model and b have a what what you see is what you get set. So when I put my model there, I don't have to do test shots and all that. I can just say, oh, that's what my light's, my light's going to look like and shoot or roll video if I want. Are we there? Are we getting close to that reality? Um, we're getting closer, but interestingly, we're not getting closer because LEDs are getting better. We're getting closer because camera sensors are getting better. So there, there are two things that uh, strobes are very good at. And LEDs are, you know, bright LEDs will never be as good. So one is output. I mean, uh, you know, if you look at LEDs, maybe they're rated for uh, 60 watts. One of the popular Godox LEDs is um, SL60. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice, super cheap or super affordable for what it is. And it has 60 watts. And that is the amount of light that, or that is the amount of power that this light will output in one second. Now, if you look at, I don't know, let's say the Godox 8200, so that's 200 watts second, and in one pulse, it outputs what would be equivalent to 20 watts of light during one second. Yeah. And, you know, that, that if, if you know your T, T halves and, you know, th those numbers, that gets squished into, like, a, a few fraction of a second. Mm -hmm. So strobes will always be more powerful than LEDs. Yeah. Um, that, that said, um, there are advantages of having strobes. You know, if you're shooting your model in a relatively dark uh, place, uh, you know, it's easier to be more intimate. Her, the eyes will look different because bright light opens your, um, uh, make your, um, is that yeah, the iris? The, the, yeah, the iris or the, or the, the pupil, iris, right? yeah. So, the, yeah, bright light will, will shrink your pupil, right? Uh, and if you're using continuous bright light, then your pupil will go, you'll see a lot of color, but the black thing, you know, the the color to your soul will be a tiny dot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure the window to your soul will be a tiny dot. So that is a thing that you can never get with a, with a bright LED. So, but you can get it with a slightly dimmer led and this is where a camera advent, advent ugh, this is where a camera advancement comes in yeah because you know uh, in the past you know i remember when they used to say in the studio you only shoot iso 100 um, i don't know you, did you remember those days or say no i do yeah film. i absolutely uh, remember that ISO yeah 100 for studio and this is not the case anymore so you can go to higher ISOs with digital cameras uh, and still maintain a very good image quality. And this is where you can uh, tone down your LEDs or use LEDs that are not as strong as strobes 
and still get the same effect. Um, interestingly, strobes and LED, you know, if you're looking at similar form factors, uh, are, are, are now at a stage where they cost s similar prices. Yeah, yeah. So we're there. So uh, what I'm hearing is it's not a, you know, much like we always say on This Week in Photo, it's not an or, it could be an and, right? So you can use LED lighting when appropriate for whatever you're trying to, to accomplish, but then, you know, you don't have to say, hey, I'm done with strobe now, you know, I'm all going all LED. You can still use strobe or use strobe for whatever jobs that call for strobe, whether it's yeah. freezing action so, or whatever, yes. right? You would use strobes when you need a lot of light, um, either to be in a very short uh, amount of time, uh, for example, if you want to freeze the action, or if you want to keep something relatively intimate and you want to keep it dark, or, or you know, if for any other reason you just need, you know, a ton of light, you have a big set and you need to light it all in a split of a second, then you would use strobe. And uh, a good friend of mine, Mr. Joe Edelman, actually has a class where he mm -hmm. shows how you can combine strobes and LEDs. And, you know, maybe the strobe will be the key light, and you get an LED which is not as bright, just for a little bit of rim light. Um, so yeah, you can as long as the temperatures match, uh, you can always mix uh, mix your lights. Yeah, we'll have to get I, Joe's a friend as well. We have to get Joe and you on to a show to to you know kind of break it out even further. Oh, I think where? It, yeah, that's, I'll that's wear fantastic. A, a more colorful <laughs> shirt for Joe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got to get an Olympus tattoo on you too. So, <laughs> so uh, but, you know, let's talk about state of the art now and where we are with LED lighting technology. I know you guys have a number of products out there. I want to talk about those as well. But where, where when you when you zoom out and you look at the industry overall, right, the lighting industry, I, I'm I'm completely. I don't know anything about LED lighting other than they look good and they don't heat up and they last a long time, right? So when you say state of the art, what does that mean? Like where, where are the advancements happening in LED lighting? So I think the, the, the drive for LEDs is actually not coming from still photographers. It's coming from video and, uh, and cine. Mm -hmm. And there um, you definitely see more output so you see aperture coming coming up with a 600 watt light, and you see non light coming up with a 500 watt light. And just just to give you perspective, those lights require a lot of power. Um, they are almost at a point where they can replace uh, HMI. So I think maybe in two or three years, uh, we'll see we'll see LED lights um, uh, replacing. HMIs. What is HMI? Uh, uh, HMI is, uh, is uh, you know how when you shoot a movie, there's like a big, like a huge, have you ever seen the Batman signal? Absolutely. Yeah. I use that, it. That, I am Batman. That, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you should flip yourself like you did uh, for me before the show. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that kind of looks like an HMI light. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. super powerful. You can fry an egg on an HMI light. Okay, got it. So yeah, so and the 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 video industry is leading the way. Still, photographers yes. and, are kind of we, you know taking the, taking the scraps that, from the yeah. video guys. And, and we're seeing a few things there. So one thing that we're seeing is that the lights are actually getting smarter. Uh, you get better control option of, of of your lights, so you can control them remotely. You can you can make them sync together. You can coordinate them. So you know that scene where someone's walking down a corridor and wherever he walks, the lights, you know, if this is like a, uh, a suspense minute, you get like, yeah. and the lights, you know, light up wherever they walk. So right, right. it's easier to do now with LED lights. Okay. The other thing that we're seeing is that LED lights are now becoming, you know, when LED lights started, we used to only have either white LEDs or daylight balanced LEDs, or we would have tungsten balanced LEDs. Most LEDs today will be bicolor or even uh, bicolor and they will have colors in them. So that is called RGB WW. So RGB for all the colors, you know, red, blue, and green and 
every mix in between. Mm -hmm. And it will also have two types of white. Um, so you can you you could really get the full gamut of light out of out of uh, those fixtures. Yeah, and you know what? You know, speaking of those fixtures, I want to talk about a couple of the ones that you guys put out because I want you you sent these over. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> hey, so these what's are, up? Th these are fantastic. Let me put the camera on me. So these are really cool. Thanks for sending this over to for me to play with. So when you these are, I want you to describe what they are, but I want to show folks what it does. So it's an <laughs> LED light, obviously, um, and it changes colors like Udi was talking about. You can press the button, but I can also wear it around with me like that. Boom. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Boom. I can be, you know. So you know, tell, me, tell me about what these particular, this model was for, and what problem do these, these lights solve for photographers? Okay. Um, so I'd like to just say that um, the ones that you were showing are, uh, are called Lumis. We now have a newer version called Q6, and they have both won NAB's uh, Product of the Year in the lighting category. Mm -hmm. And I think this is because of their very unique form factor. So aside the fact that they're fun and they're slappable, um, they're also here. Um, they're also magnetic, so mm -hmm. um, you can mount them. On, I'm going to turn it on. So you can mount them on your light stand, or now I get a little bit of, re I don't know if you can see this, that I get a little bit of yeah, nice room light. Um, here, let's, uh, here, so um, they're magnetic, they're super, super slim. Uh, they will go in places where other lights can't go. And they are super light, they're under 22 grams. So I, I, I don't know if you're the lightest, uh, lightest light, can you, can I, can I say? Lightest light? Uh, Am I the, to say that? the lower oh, weight is light. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> would, this, would this be considered a dead pun? Um, I think we're the, one of the lightest lights in the industry. And I think we're one of the thinnest lights in the industry. Uh, so when you combine those two, we can get in very, very narrow spaces uh, for product photography. We do wonders uh, if you want to, you know, just give a little bit of light. Uh, uh, a, a splash of light in a scene. Um, so th this is what those lights are made for. Okay, that's awesome. Or I would just like to go on record to say that they can be used on a coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. Wherever you want to put them, Star cheers. Trek <laughs> are you a Star Trek fan? You, you, you can always do this. No, the, the Jordi LaForge. The Jordi LaForge, look, there you go, there you go. Uh, <laughs> and these are cool, you know, and then just, you know, in all seriousness, looking at the, I was looking at the website a while back and how you guys are marketing these. These are, they look, they look very, like we're joking around and they look, you know, these are great stocking stuffers for photographers, right? But they these are, are, these are serious lighting tools. I mean, they've got the USB port on the bottom and you guys have shipped some mounts with them so that you can get them where you want them and articulate them in place. So who are you so targeting? Like, who is it? Is it product photographers that you're targeting for this device or is it, you know, we have, whomever? We have, uh, 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 well, when we started, our main tar target was uh, video people because those are perfect for, you know, they're, they're, you cannot use them to light a room, but you just need a splash of light or if you know you need, I'm, I'm actually being lit right now uh, with Q6 lights. And if you just need this little bit of light, then they are wonderful for cinematography. Uh, but then we started getting feedback from users, and we saw that a lot of product photographers are using them. Um, we've seen a lot of light painting going on with them. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see this. Um, let me do this. They have an effects thing. So I don't know if you can see how the color changes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you can wave it around and create... Um, um, some effects. We've we've seen photos. Um, NASCAR used those lights uh, when they shot their drivers, so they put them in the helmets uh, to create like kind of glow. Um, Ford actually Ford uh, did an advertisement, which won the advertisement of advertisement of the year, I think, two years ago. And again, they used those in very, very tiny places. Um, they had a guy doing welding stuff. So they put this inside um, the eye shield to create mm -hmm. a red aura 
around him. And uh, so we're seeing them used in like those very, very tight places, very tight spaces where it's hard to see. We're seeing them used a lot for product photography. Um, so, you know, if, if you're doing something, maybe you want to get a light in a very specific place uh, and that long and very thin form factor makes it really easy for you. Mm -hmm. they, they are, in, uh, you know, I don't want to toot my, my own horn, but they're incredibly bright for the size. On the other hand, they can go very, very low. So you can get them very, very close to your object and, you know, and still not come in too hot. Are the, are the lights, are these particular lights, um, I know there's batteries in here, right? So they're, they're battery powered, obviously. Um, but with the USB port on the bottom, can they be powered continuously from, a, from an external power source? So not only they can be powered um, externally, because they require so little power, they're incredibly efficient. So because they require so little power, let me show you. So this, this is the size of the battery, those two little chocolate thingies. These mm -hmm. are the size of the batteries. Now let me grab power bank here. Uh, here. And this, this is your standard power bank. So you, you can see the size, right? Yeah. One power bank like this will probably run this uh, for about one and a half to two days. Wow. Wow. Uh, but I, I, I can do one better. This is, this is uh, one of the devices that we sell. And, you know, this one goes into the USB power thingy. So, you know, it can be an outlet like a USB socket. It can be a power bank. It can even be a, uh, you know, some of the batteries like V-mount batteries or recently NPF batteries will have USB outlets. So you can also use these. And this side has three uh, USB ports. So you can use these. You can use one USB to charge and power three Q6 lights. So that is incredibly efficient uh, if you're on set. Can you, with the, with the lights, and I'm just I'm just being selfish now. So, folks, if you have questions for Udi, go ahead and go ahead and put them in the chat, and I'll ask them before we wrap this up in a minute here. But you know, my my selfish question is, you know, I you I have a couple of these things, and I want to place them around my desk area, you know, because I have um, I'm frequently, you know shooting from this angle or other angles and I want to have highlights of light around, am I able to power these continuously indefinitely from an outlet or is there some danger keeping them constantly uh, on? So we've had our test light has been on for over two years. <laughs> still, That's awesome. still running and we, we measure the matrix weekly. So it's still running and it's still CRI 95 plus. The, the there is no color shift, and it's it's been on two years uh, straight. You know, other than power outages. If you're using them on the, on your table, then you know those little uh, tripod thingies. Yeah. You know, so we have a we have a mounting thing, uh, a mounting device, and this is actually a ball head with a holder. So you know that would go on your tripod. Hold on here. I know those you can get like for a buck on Amazon, mm -hmm. those tripods, and this will go on your tripod, and then you can mount, you can mount your Q6 on here. And it just snaps in there, yeah. And it snaps in there. Um, let me light. I'm gonna light light it on the lowest. Oh, that's on killer. The lowest here, nice, nice green. Yeah. Let there be light. Yeah, you know what? I want to go. I want to do you one better, Udi. I'm going to do you one better. Look at this. So, here's that thing you were talking about right here. Yeah. But I've got it attached to one of these articulating oh, arms clever. that can clamp anywhere, and I can just snap my lights in and out of this guy and go to town. And these things, these little arms, I think they're on Amazon for they're under twenty bucks or something. They're rel they're relatively cheap. So yeah, so there's a. There's a ton of possibilities, and that's just a standard tripod mount. And it's a the other cool thing which you didn't mention. I'm gonna have to tell your marketing guy on you because you're not you didn't mention this. <laughs> um, was this is what I found interesting for a lot of things that I'm starting to do now, and that's the fact that this mount here. Let me take this off of here. Um, this mount, the mount here. Can I focus on that? Will you focus camera? Let's see. 
it may not want to focus. Here it is. Oh, so it's there closer. you go. It's closer. I don't know. So the mount is is a cold shoe mount as well. Yep. So you can slide that in on top of your camera if you're doing things that need that, or if you have a mount that you need to, you know, you need the the cold shoe and, capability on. And, and here here's the nice thing: if you're putting this on your camera, um, here let me um, get away with the tripod. So if this is on your camera, I don't have a camera here. But if this is on your camera, this is this is pretty far away from your lens. Yeah. Um, so you get nice, a little bit of centerish light. You can use it like this, you know, with a. This is definitely a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. But you can also um, tilt it sideways, and you know, go like this, and this will give you a wide light. So this will give you a soft light on the horizontal axis, and you can you can also go. Uh, let me close this down. And you can also go diagonal. On, and from what we found, this is a, a great uh, conversation starter. And mm -hmm. B, it gives a very, very beautiful soft light um, to your subject. And as, at, I, I don't know if you mentioned this, those lights are CRI 95. So the skin rendition is, you know, the skin colors are wonderful um, with the bicolor lights. Love that. Love that. All right. Well, let, let's let's wrap it up here. I want to just take a couple of questions from the chat. Um, looking at one of them from WorkPix uh, 360 Virtual Tours, He's, he wants to know, are you using Cree LEDs? I know once upon a time they were the choice of manufacturers. I have no idea yes. what that means. You may we know are, what that means. <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah. Cree are a, a light manufacturer. So if you go on Amazon and you type Cree, you'll get a lot of flashlights. Uh, they're the go-to choice for flashlight makers. We are not using Cree LEDs. Uh, sadly, I cannot disclose our manufacturer. Uh, uh -huh. But we're using very, very nice LEDs. So you remember when you were talking about the LEDs that you buy at Walmart? Mm -hmm. So if I, as a manufacturer, go to buy those LEDs, they cost me X. And when I buy my LEDs, they cost me six times as much per Per this little thingy. Um, okay, so, so you're getting the good. You're getting the good ones. Um, <laughs> here's here's another question. Uh, hey, good dog. Good dog just showed up. Um, here's a question. Kashmir says, "I want a whole box of these things." Yeah, me too. Uh, yep. And so, um, let me show you this. If you have if you have three of them, we have this. Oh, look at that! You can just, yeah, you can just. I, did, I thought I sent you one. You need to, to better look at your boxes, man. I do, man. <laughs> you should see my office. Uh, you can put them together and you get a panel. And again, this panel is also magnetic. I've, I've never tried putting this here, but no. there you go. Oh, look at that. That is cool. See, you guys are making these toys. I love it. Um, <laughs> okay, so here's another question. Uh, WorkPix wants to know, I wonder how they would work in green screen applications. I don't know if there's enough light from these to, to light a green screen, but maybe something in a foreground element, right? Um, you know, we, in, in terms of distance, we describe them best as, uh, you know, if you want to light a person. So we say you go for selfie distance. Um, mm -hmm. If you go anywhere further than that, that they're, they're not making a lot of light. Uh, when you're doing green screen, you want to get the entire green background very even, very evenly lit, and you need a lot of light to do that. Um, we do have speculars; those are our other types of lights that are bigger, and we actually have a lot of green screen clients for them. Uh, those become a strip. Uh, oh, you can you yeah. can uh, daisy chain up to four of them. I think you use them for a while. I do. I still use them. them. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you can you can create a strip out of those lights. Uh, you can you can put eight of them together, and they will uh, they will fix a, a green screen very nicely. That's cool. That is cool. All right, here, here's a, another comment. Uh, this is from Rui. Rui says, "When I'm shooting concerts, sometimes I need to record small video interviews with bands uh, backstage. This lights with the new supports are great to light. Yeah, there you go. So running gun." Yeah stuff running gun applications yeah this this is crazy so talk about the um, before we before we end this Udi, i want to i want to talk a little bit about the product line so you show these guys uh you show the specular what is in the what's in the spiffy gear lineup 
Uh, so for 2021, we're going to have newer version for all those lights. Um, we may or may not have uh, a, a Q6 Pro or a Q4, um, which will combine uh, both the, uh, the RGB and the bicolor lights into one light that will also be brighter. Uh, so we may or may not have that one. Okay, awesome. All right, and then my final question uh, is going to be about pricing and discount, obviously. So the specular and and these guys, uh, these little lights. What are we what are we looking at price wise? And uh, I, got, I saw an email from you that there's a discount that you're going to yep. throw down for the twist people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, look at you. You're doing this very well. Have you ever <laughs> thought of being the a show host? Um, yeah, start a podcast or something? Nah, it's, it's all a fail. Oh, no, I think you would do well. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm going to do my whole sales spill right now. Yeah, go for uh, it. Give me 20 seconds. So right now, if you go to spiffygear.com, we have the Black Friday sale running. And so everything Light Blaster is 50% off. And Light Blaster is a very unique uh, image projection device. It uses slides or it uses transparencies and a strobe. So you can uh, connect a camera to a strobe to a light blaster, and the light blaster will only project the image when the camera is clicking. Oh. And that, that for until the end of today, that is for 50% off. If you go over to Q, which is the small lights that we've shown here, um, they're usually selling for 45 or 49.99, something like that, or 44.99. Uh, but for uh, this week in photo uh, listeners, we're going to have them discounted uh, in 15%. Use the code TWIP TWIP15. I think this is a try and say that uh, five times fast. No, okay. I don't. I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that code is for uh, TWIP, uh, TWIP listeners only, and it'll get you 15% off or, or on our entire uh, Q line. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. And I'll, I'll link to that, folks. If you missed that, twip, twip 15 if you missed that, I will put that in the description for this YouTube video as well as in the, the blog post on thisweekinphoto.com. And you'll be able to find that just by searching for Spiffy Gear. You'll find that. One final thought from Kashmir. Kashmir says, yeah, great to have in your bag just in case, right? And that, you yep. know, just why not, right? So on that, so here's, here's a quick question on you from a technical standpoint. I have no idea what the answer to this is, but if I charge these guys up, throw them in my bag, like Kashmir says, just in case, how long are they gonna hold a charge in there before they end? And uh, how are their power the management? Charge. Yeah, so when they're off, they're off. Uh, mm -hmm. Lithium iron battery, li lithium polymer battery, which are the batteries that we use, kind of drain after three months. So I would say you would need to refresh them every couple of months. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you can throw them in a the bag and it will give you a good hour of light. Okay, cool. And I'm good to travel with these, right? So some, some batteries you can't check. You have to carry them on. I can check these. They're, they're tiny, right? Uh, you cannot check. So... This is this is a huge thing, you know. Thank you, Samsung, for this. <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to check any batteries. So any batteries that you have, no matter how small, you have to put them in your carry-on bag. Really? Yep. I mean, the battery. I mean, I, that's so ridiculous. I, the battery <laughs> in my iPhone is bigger than these batteries. I mean, <laughs> you're not allowed to check in your iPhone. I couldn't if I wanted to check my or my tablet. I couldn't throw my tablet in my luggage. I have to carry that. I did not you know that. To. All right. Well, you know, that there's, you should and that there's you, you know, this is what you should do. Uh, yeah. Whatever you decide to do. So you're not allowed laptops, you're not allowed uh, action cameras, anything that has any type of battery in there needs to go with you into the cabin. Wow. Okay. And there are restrictions right. there, but, you know, they're for, for big, big, you know, they're for batteries like this. So th this is the kind of battery where you start. Uh, having problems if you want to take this on an airplane. Yeah, yeah, I have I have one of those for my tether tool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah, but With here's that? a pro tip for you. Here's a pro yeah. tip for you. If you're using these for travel, make sure to drain them seventy percent, so they're only thirty percent charged, and you will get a lot less hassle from uh, from airport security. Okay. All right. 
Ah, <sighs> so crazy. So much, so many rules. <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder how many people just either are ignorant of that or just, you know, even, you know, IE, they don't know the rules and they just chip, you know, put everything in their luggage and check it in or yeah, just don't between, care. You know, between terrorists, Samsung, Samsung phones exploding and, uh, you know, COVID, yeah. airport, airport security is going to be a lot tighter. Uh, sure. When we move along, so yeah. I don't remember here, here, when you when you when you had to scan your films, and then you had to get like a special uh, lead bag. Yep. So when they scanned the films, they wouldn't die. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Here, here's a final a final question for you on travel before we end this. What uh, are when you travel? You know, are you the guy that when they say put your phone in airplane mode? Do you actually put it in airplane mode, or do you, do you just silence it? Can, can, can we move to the following question, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, you know, nine times out of ten, I just don't. I mean, I silence it, but, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, and, you know, I could tell when we're getting close to my destination because my phone starts vibrating with all the messages that I missed when I was... <laughs> I know, like, what's, what are those beeps? I thought that all the phones were off. Yeah, and look at that. With one episode, Frederick is on the do not fly list. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Well, cool, man. Well, thank you for coming on. So uh, cheers. And one final. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, man. So give us give us the URL and the discounts again before we end this. Yep. So the URL is spiffygear.com. Um, if you go over to the Q section, you'll see all the Q lights, the Q6 lights, and all the different attachments that we showed here. Uh, the code is TWIP TWIP15, and it'll get you 15% off. Um, I think that's going to run uh, until December 5th. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right, my friend. Thanks again. Keep the, keep your lights shining and bright. Thank you for sending these over. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to play so with these. Thank you so much for having me, Frederick. Yeah, anytime, man. And thanks, everyone who joined in the chat and are checking this out. There'll be a replay available for this a little bit later, thisweekinphoto.com, and this will also be in the podcast if you're a subscriber to the TWIP podcast. And a, a huge thanks to Udi Taraj for coming on and schooling us on the quality of lights and how all photons photons were not, are not created equal, right? <laughs> cool, man. All right, thank you, everybody. and We'll, we'll see you guys next time. This is Twitter.